everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Sharon and this is a channel that is dedicated to all things related to narcissism. I've been married to a covert narcissist for almost 20 years. I'm separated from him now and what I do with this channel is I use my real life experiences to get information out there to people about what narcissism really is, what it looks like, what it does to you and what it does to your family. In today's video, I'm going to go over five signs that you have suffered narcissistic abuse. Being in a relationship with a narcissist affects you deeply. I don't think it's an exaggeration for me to tell you that I believe it affects your very soul, the core of your being. Narcissistic abuse causes you to lose sight of your own value and the value of your needs. You don't matter anymore. Narcissists use words and behavior in manipulative ways to damage, alter, and control your behavior. What happens is that victims surrender their personality and happiness. You don't even know it's happening. So in today's video, I'm going to discuss five signs that you have suffered narcissistic abuse. If you recognize any of these signs in your own life, please pay careful attention. The reality is if you are in a relationship with a narcissist or other abusive person, it isn't going to get better until you make changes. You're the one that has to make the difference in your own life. You can never count on a narcissist or anybody else to change their behavior. It has to come from you. So please pay careful attention to these signs. The first sign that I'm going to discuss is anxiety. When you are with an abusive person, when you are with a narcissist, you feel restless and unsettled because a narcissist is not a stable person, you know, and that is going to affect you. You can't have a stable relationship with an unstable person. So you are restless and unsettled. This is where you'll hear walking on eggshells. It really happens. You know, in my situation, it would be maybe an hour or two before my ex was going to come home from work. I would be horrified. The panic would start to settle in because I didn't know what type of mood he was going to be in. Narcissist's mood affects everybody else in the house. So if he came home and he was in a good mood, we could breathe. If he came home and he was in a bad mood or he was upset about something, the whole night was ruined and maybe further. It just depended. You know, my ex was huge on silent treatments. If he felt like it, he would give me a silent treatment for as long as he wanted. And then that would ruin my life for however long he was giving me the silent treatment. I did not have any self-confidence at this point. I didn't, it didn't even occur to me how wrong this was. I just accepted it as my life. This is what happens with narcissistic abuse. Now, if I was in a bad mood or if I had a problem, that never mattered. You know, that wasn't going to change his personality. That wasn't going to change anything. He wasn't going to be there for me. He wasn't going to comfort me or talk to me. He would have been in a bad mood. That probably would have set him off. And then I would have disregarded my own problem to concentrate on him. This is what happens. Now, it wasn't just him coming home from work. It would be if something happened during the day that I knew would upset him, I would be horrified. For example, we live in New Hampshire, so we get our heat from propane. Now, propane is very expensive. So during the winter, the, you know, we'll have propane delivered once a month. So I'm at home, and all of a sudden, I hear the propane guy come into the driveway. You know, beep, beep, he's backing up. Oh, no, I'm panicked. I'm horrified. Oh, no, he's going to be in a bad mood. My ex was horrible with money. Now, I didn't know this for a large part of the relationship, but he was hiding bills from me. He had secret credit card debt, all these types of things. So when we had any bill, he would be, he would fly into a rage. He'd be so upset. You know, it would be like little things like, oh, whatever, I have to take the dog down to the vet. That would be horrible. He'd be so mad about this. Every little thing, anything that we had to do, any amount of spending money. So essentially, our family couldn't get our basic needs met without him being upset. We weren't allowed to heat our home. You know, I wasn't allowed to get my dog vaccinations. That was a problem. He wanted to just have me spend absolutely nothing because he was going wild on his part. He made sure that he had drugs, alcohol, gambling, whatever he wanted was fine. But me, no. This is what happens. You know, for a narcissist, it's one way for them and another way for everybody else. But this affects you drastically. You are so anxious and that affects your health. And that's going to be another sign later on. But, you know, these things are real. Now, the second sign I'm going to discuss is social withdrawal. Narcissists are isolators. They isolate you. They look at themselves as your owner. They own you and they don't share. 
they like to control you. They want to keep you away from other people so that they can more easily manipulate you. They can more easily control you. If you have a lot of friends, if you have a large social network, if you have a family that is there and supports you, they might be able to tell you that something's not right in your relationship. The narcissist can't have that. You know, my ex was really big on telling me that other people didn't like me. That led me to kind of staying away from other people because I didn't believe that he was lying to me. You know, this is the crucial thing. You believe it's true. So, you know, he would always tell me that, you know, other people, we'd see other people at church or whatever, and he would tell me, oh, do you see the way that person was looking at you? I can tell they don't like you. And then I became almost paranoid. And then you're very lonely because you're all by yourself. And when you're in a relationship with a narcissist, even though that person could be right next to you, you're still all alone. You feel it deeply. You know, the, just because there's a physical presence doesn't mean that they're there for you. You know, being in a relationship with a narcissist, it's almost like if I was in trying to have a relationship with a character in a book. You know, this person doesn't exist. They're not there for me. I can't communicate with them. Or, you know, if I'm watching a TV show and there's some guy on the show and, I, oh, that's my partner. No, the, that there's nothing thing there. You know, they're a person, they're a real person, or in the case of a book, they're not even real, but still like, that's what it's like, you know? So the person could be right next to you, but they don't exist. It might as well be a character in the, in a book. You are alone and you feel that deeply. You don't have a support. Now, the third one is self-doubt. Self-doubt can be crippling. You know, when you're with an abusive partner, your self-worth has become so decimated that you don't even know who you are anymore. You know, oftentimes narcissists have gaslighted you so much that you don't even realize what is reality. You become a people pleaser, insecure about everything. Narcissists warp your reality. Basically, you've been programmed to see abusive behavior as normal. You know, at one point, I was so insecure in my relationship, I remember thinking, how did I get married? How did I even get into this relationship? You know, I remembered that I used to have friends. I used to have support. I used to have a life. And then now I don't. And it didn't occur to me that the common denominator was my husband. I didn't think that at all. I just thought, wow, I'm so lucky I met him when I did because I could never get married now. I could never be in a relationship. I, I can't even make a friend because I, I'm just so worthless. This is what I thought. Of course, he loved that. That was, that was a perfect situation for him. I didn't even like making phone calls. I was so insecure. So it'd be like I had to make a phone call to make a doctor's appointment. I wanted my ex to do it because I felt so down on myself. I felt like I couldn't even communicate on the telephone to just make an appointment. Yeah, I'd like to make a physical for my son. I mean, just that was too much for me to do. That is how bad it was in my relationship. I mean, it's horrifying and it's embarrassing for me to admit this in my videos, but I'm really trying to get people to understand how bad narcissistic abuse is. And if this is happening to you, it's intentional by the narcissist. If you feel like you can't even make a phone call because people are looking down on you, that isn't right. That isn't normal. And when you think, I used to have friends, I used to have support, what happened? That isn't normal. Look at the common denominator. Of course, my ex would always have himself be the opposite. He was so enthusiastic about meeting people. He was so exuberant. You know, he would really show off with his personality because he loved that I was not like that. So then people would talk to him and then he would say, oh yeah, did you see that? Like at church, you know, what my ex used to do at church we used to, of course, it was before COVID, but, you know, we'd be at church and there'd be like this little meet and greet. So you'd shake people's hands or say hi to everybody. So most people in the church would do that to the people around them, right? People may run in front of you, left, right? My ex would walk up and down the aisles, talking to everybody, greeting people. And then he would come back and he would say, oh, did you see I was talking to so-and-so and so-and-so? Oh, yeah, look at that. You know, he loved to pat himself on the back. Nobody else did that but he would meet way more people doing that and then brag to me about it because of course me, I was a person that couldn't even make a phone call. So compared to him, you know, it was night and day. This was all intentional. He was abusing me right there at church, right in front of everybody. You know, people don't know. I didn't even know. But these are the types of things that happen. So when you're in a relationship with an abusive person, they use every opportunity to try to needle you. I mean, they really do. Number four, helplessness. This typically happens later in the relationship when you understand that something is not right. 
You know, you'll start second guessing yourself. You'll start wondering, how did I do? How did I put up with this? How could I have let this happen? You know, you blame yourself for the way that somebody else treats you. You, you have learned helplessness. You know, you can't believe how stupid you were. How could this happen? How could I not see who this person was? Then you know this, but you feel stuck. You feel like you can't get out. Well, I guess this is just my lot in life. Now I'm stuck in this relationship forever. You understand what's happening, but you still feel like you can't get out. That is because you are still suffering under the abuse. You feel like you don't have any control in your life. And this can manifest in procrastination, depression, and most important, staying in a nightmare of a relationship. You know, we're going to talk about this in a minute at the end of these five signs, but you can get out of the relationship. When you're with a narcissist or other abusive person, you cannot trust the way that you feel because you've been altered. You know, somebody has manipulated you. It's crucial to understand how things should be and just go for that. Just go towards it. Understand what reality is. It doesn't matter the way that you're thinking in that moment. You have to grasp hold of what you should do, what you know you should do, not how you feel. Now, the, the fifth thing I'm going to talk about is physical symptoms. Narcissistic abuse is so painful, it's so traumatizing that it goes beyond emotionally affecting you. This can manifest into physical symptoms. You know, a lot of people that I have heard about, including myself, have suffered migraines because of narcissistic abuse. I used to get crippling migraines. They were so bad. I used to have to wear sunglasses in the house sometimes. Like any light would just set me off and I would get like the aura too. So I couldn't see. So I'd see like all these zigzag lines. It was horrible. I would have to, like, I'd literally have to be in bed and it would last for a couple of days. It was terrible. You know, it would just come on all of a sudden. I'd just be doing whatever. And then I'd start seeing out of the corner of my eye, like these little zigzag lines and like, oh no, here it is. And then a half hour later, it was over. Since my ex and I split up, I have not had one migraine, not one. When we were together, I would get them once or twice a month. I mean, really, it was terrible. I lived in fear of these migraines. It was all from the stress. You're under so much stress all the time. It's like this pressure cooker, you know, and it's not just migraines. People will have insomnia, panic attacks. I mean, panic attacks for anybody who's had a panic attack. My God, those are terrible. I've had three or four panic attacks in my life. They're so bad. You feel like you're going to have a heart attack. Like you're dying. It's the worst thing ever. This overwhelming dread hits you and you can't get rid of it. Once it's coming on, it's too late. You have to control your stress beforehand and it can get out of control quick. And for me, it would last days and I was horrible. I remember I had a panic attack once and I actually thought I was hiding it from my kids. I was trying to act normal. All of a sudden, my daughter burst into tears and she's like, I don't know what's wrong. I just feel so upset right now. It was because of my panic attack. And that just, and I thought I was faking it with them. I was trying to act completely normal, even though I was dying inside. So just like a narcissist, their personality, their psychosis, the way that they are affects you so drastically, you also affect other people. You're affecting your kids, everybody that you come in contact with. It's so crucial to see the reality so that you can live a life that is right for you, that's healthy for you. You know, people also have weight problems. You know, you might gain a lot of weight or you might lose a lot of weight. People get eating disorders. They have drug and alcohol problems because you're trying to control how bad you feel inside because of the way that somebody else is treating you. Now, the good thing, there is some positive news about this. With all that said, narcissistic abuse is reversible. It is. It can get better. Your life can change once you know the reality, everything can change. It's up to you. And I realize, I recognize completely, it isn't fair. It's criminal. It's morally wrong. Everything negative that you think is the reality. However, it's up to you to change your life. Yeah, this person should be punished. They deserve the worst in life. But if you focus on that, you're not going to be able to heal yourself. Every choice that we make shapes the destiny that we want. You know, if you want to have a good life, you have to make wise choices. You know, what you, as Viktor Frankl said, human beings possess the capacity 
to creatively to create creatively turn life's negative aspects into something positive or constructive and to transform suffering into human achievement or accomplishment. He's right. Once you recognize reality, once you recognize what's going on, that you are or were in an abusive relationship, it's your choices that can get you to the destiny that you want. It's up to you. Somebody else controlled you for so long and that was criminal. It was terrible. And I really, when I think about my ex, I hope that bad things happen to him. And maybe that's bad for me to think that way. And maybe I need to move on from that further. Maybe. But I'm just telling you that is how I feel. But I also recognize that I have to let that go and, and concentrate on myself and my kids because I want us to have a wonderful life. I have dreams for the future and I feel blessed. Yes, blessed that I am awake and alert and I know what happened. Yeah, maybe I'm in my 40s now and I wish that this never happened. But if I just hold on to that and don't move forward, I'm going to lose more time to this person. I'm not even with him anymore and he's still affecting me. The truth, the hard truth, and I'll tell you, and this is going to be true for all of us, is that I really am a better person today because of what I went through. Part of it's maturity, but part of it is an appreciation of life. I know the bad parts of life. I've lived in hell, so I can appreciate the good things. And I'm telling you, when your eyes are open, when you're aware of the goodness in life, when you can see positivity, good things can happen. I have some stuff I'm going to be telling you guys as the months go on. I've had some really good things been happening in my life and it's all because my eyes are open and these things just fell into my lap and they wouldn't have if it wasn't for the fact that I'm awake and I'm aware and I'm ready to live a good life. This can happen for all of us. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm very grateful and I appreciate it. I hope everybody has a great day. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I make videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So if all goes well, I will see you in Wednesday's video. And God bless.